What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. Today, we're going to be traveling to Ohio to witness three men start their journey into penitentiary. And if you happen to be new to the channel, we talk about all things lockup related. If this genre somehow brings joy to your life, then by all means, hit that like, subscribe, notification bell before you leave. For the newly convicted, this is the last view of the free world. The small town of Orient, Ohio. Home to the Correctional Reception Center. Look, every time I went to prison, I mean, this is pretty much the same view I see. And probably hundreds of others. It's either desert or farmland. I mean, they put these prisons in the middle of nowhere. If you decide to run, you're going to be running for days, maybe weeks. Known as CRC. A prison of 1,600 inmates. Maximum security. The first stop for doing time here. This is how I used to wake up, and it made me realize I was in a maximum security prison. I wake up, make my coffee in my little sink, go over there because we had a little window in our cell. It had metal mesh right in front of the window. You look out of it and you'll see a gun tower. Some days you'll see the guy sitting out there with his gun, but most days he's usually just sitting there chilling. If I remember correctly, I used to look to the right and see the death chamber. Look at the sun and the beautiful blue sky and say it's going to be a good day. Sip my coffee and get ready for the poker table. That right there is considered massive security to me. When that van pulls up to that back and you're going into a sally port that's filled with all that razor wire, your mind's in a fog. You don't know what's going on. And for that sick moment, you'll have a smile on your face. And then reality hits you. you pull up at that back gate. It's over. When I pulled into the first major prison, I wasn't prepared for what I was about to see. I was completely shocked because I just left a place where I thought was kind of like prison it was reception it was like a big open dorm with bunks it's, that's what I thought prison was gonna be like where I went next hell if I was wrong but we pulled up and it was like a city it wasn't no hangars it was literally buildings it looked like a mini metropolis an airport and around these buildings they had yards with thousands of people walking it was winter time so all you saw was big ass blue jackets and orange hats walking like cattle i said to myself yup this shit's for the big boys it was a crazy experience and i'll never forget the last view that i seen before we turned in was this bridge right this bridge we had to cross it was super skinny one lane bridge and on each side was water there's no water out there. I mean, we're in farmland. This was like a man-made moat that you would see around a castle or something. And there was no railings. That's the crazy part about it. If he just went off the road just a split inch, we're going into water and we're cuffed in that damn van. Then I saw them 40-foot tall razor wire fences. Shit looked like Jurassic Park or something. This is where more than 14,000 inmates each year classified and moved on to serve out their sentence. Pockets here, sir. What are you in your pockets? Turn around. Arms straight out. Shit. I will be watching for you the rest of the time. Do you understand me? Yes, sir. Skip. I'll be watching you till you die, boy. Go on now. Skip. Take your shower shoes off. Put one inside the other. Set them in front of you. That big toe's cold as hell, ladies and gentlemen. Go ahead, give him a new pair of socks, LT. Take the jumpsuit off, roll it up, set it on top of shower shoes. This is the first place they come. They're completely uh, stripped naked. Stripping naked like the day you were born. Repeat offenders like Aaron White have been locked up before, and he has a marking that stands out. Uh, I should say Iron Brotherhood Loyalty. A group classified as a white supremacist gang. I think that I intimidate just the way I look more than anything else. That's why I wear my hair the way I do in here. Uh, when I'm outside, I got a lot of hair. And here I shave it. Man, that Jane bald scully, man. Come on now, you ain't rocking no hair on them streets. Now, before we move forward, please allow me to do the prison reception analysis. As you can see, we have front porch properties out here in the dorm in case of excess of inmates. Look at the regality of the well-painted trim. The walls and floors have been thoroughly buffed. There's not a sight of cobwebs to be seen. And let us not forget the windows looking outside in the pod. So with that being said, in the natural sunlight coming through the windows, I give this a strong nine. Beautiful reception center pod. Rodney Ruggles seem to come in with their own agenda. I'm a short timer, so I don't care. 
We gang. broke the law on the street for not listening and doing what we wanted to do. So we still come here with that mind. I'm rebellious against authority. I do what I want to do, not what somebody tells me to do. Look, that shit's for the damn birds. This guy's a damn maniac. This guy better never come back to lock up or face some serious time, right? Because they'll run this damn thing right back in the courtroom and say, Look, your honor, says he is born to break the law and ain't nothing gonna change. Everything you say will be used against you, even recordings like this, man. So hopefully this guy don't get him the hell up. He could be a short timer again. It's sick and twisted. When I begin throwing my fist, I want to go until you can't move no more. Everybody says that shit. Where Marquise Hayes has just stepped off the bus and is getting his first taste of prison in Ohio. There was a lot of stress going on with me, you know what I'm saying? You think about everything that you see and heard about prison how inmates get stabbed and everything, think about all that. Date of birth. But before the classrooms and the workshops, there's the main business of CRC. Now almost every prison I went to, I came to a window just like this. Before you go in, you're supposed to get two or three pairs of white socks, underwear, shirts, state blues, which is the jacket, jeans, belt. Might give you a little hygiene kit with a miniature toothbrush and toothpaste, all that stuff. And also back in the day, now they changed the law in Virginia, but back in the day, if you had like hair longer than six inches, they were buzzing that shit. And if you didn't want to cut it, they're going to throw you in the side pocket. Those Rastafarians, man, I was in the hole with those cats. They were sitting back there for years because they didn't want to cut their dreads. I'm sure now that they changed the law, they got up out of there coming out that damn hole with 13 foot long dreads, man. You will not talk for the time you come out of your cell, time you get what? back in your cell. No talking. I'm trying to scare him, but you know, the officers run the institutions around here, not the inmates. I yell out loud, you're ready for town. That means get the hell up and get ready for town. You get fully dressed, your ID, step outside the cell, keep your mouth shut. I run a quiet block. That's the way it's going to be. This guy wants to run a prison block like a library. You come out the cell, there's no talking. Holy shit. Oh, I've been definitely one of those guys as soon as he turns his back, asshole. Not me, though, not me, them. All that remains is a cell assignment. Uh-oh, getting his and new a cellie who will cellie. be the new kid's only company for the next 72 hours. Next 72 hours. I'm only 30 years old, but... So they're only in this block for 72 hours. Okay, that makes more sense because I went to a prison just like this. The pod was beautiful. Beautiful pod. Wasn't too many people in there. It was quiet, laid back. I thought that's where I was going to be for the rest of my time. Damn if I was wrong. i never forget that night too. The first night I was in there, someone rolled up on me, asked me if I wanted to get some bud. And I was like, damn, first night, just my street sense kicked in. Hell nah, bro, you're hot as hell. So I told him, nah, I'm good. Well, it turns out that was just a reception block. Two days later, they gave me a drug test, so if I got that bud and smoked it, I would've failed my drug test, went to a high level five, where they're carrying swords strapped to their thigh. Thank God I said no to that reefer. But anyways, they moved me from that beautiful, clean, shiny block to the damn projects. But I walk in there and it ain't shiny no more. Everything's dull, I, a totally different shade of color. So this makes a lot more sense now. This is reception probably to go to their main building, if I were to guess, if I were to guess. But he's getting his new celly right now. Hayes is assigned to cell 2051. His cellmate, Aaron White. Shit. I don't know if they just didn't show it or not, but look, the proper thing to do is uh, introduce yourself, you know, and go from there. But dude just put his shit down, started bending over right in front of him, didn't introduce himself or nothing. That's kind of rude if you were to ask me. <laughs> Since our first step in here, it's a reality check. It's just something that... Uh, Damn, they giving people slingshots in this prison? This facility dying to get people's cheeks taken, giving out dungarees. These right here are called official bars of soap because they can be put in a sock and used as a weapon. Most facilities, they give you tiny little slivers now because people are getting knocked out and killed with bars of soap. Still can't get past them slingshots. Stuff is crazy. Oh shit, what is he doing? Don't do that, bro. Yeah, I, I get through it, though. I'm gonna oh, get through it. Shit. Ain't got no choice but to do it. Oh my god, his teardrop just made my face itch. 
This is something that you... Can you imagine the guy on the bunk right now? He's totally unprepared for this. Young Buck's usually the one snapping, going crazy. This guy comes in crying his ass off. Unreal. This is what you never do. Never do in a prison is start crying in front of a cell you haven't even introduced yourself to yet. Yeah.